Father God, pour your spirit upon us now, Father. Continue to brood among, among us. Continue to do things in our lives, Father, which is spectacular and amazing and miraculous. And create in us seeds of encouragement, of blessing. For us to be the people we're called to be in you. Amen. Take your seats, please. John chapter 12, 23 to 28 says this. Now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Those who love their lives in this world will lose it. Those who care for their lives in this world will keep it for eternity. Anyone who wants to serve me must follow me because my servants must be where I am. And my Father will honour anyone who serves me. Galatians 2.20 says these words here. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live but Christ lives within me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith through the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. This piece of scripture is basically Jesus is pre-warning people, but basically I've got to, go to, I've got to go to God, I've got to die, but I've got to rise again. For that to happen, this, this needs to happen, but for that to happen, it means that there'll be fruit and harvest, and people come into faith. But also, he's talking about all of us in this room here, all of us in this world here as well. That for us to live, we need to die to ourselves and live a life for God and not for ourselves. Now, does that seem a bit extreme to you? For us to live, we need to die to ourselves. Is that God being selfish? And if not, why not? So you put your hands up. Let's have some answers there, please. No, it's not God being selfish. He gave um, his only son for us. He didn't have to do anything. He could have just said, I'm done with the world, but he didn't. He sent his son down here in flesh, and he died so that we could live again with God. That's a good sermon there, isn't it? Thank you for that. Anyone else? Not all at once. Come on, let's have a few hands up, shall we? Let me get, get, go through the obstacle course. It's not selfish. It's not selfish. It has to do with he knows that we need to do that for our own well-being. He knows how completely wrecked that we are. And the only way that we can have well-being is to allow him to live within us and to take over. Okay. Anyone else? Let's go around there. It'd be nice to put your hand up in order so I don't have to walk around the whole church to get to you. Right. There'll be someone at the front next. You watch. <laughs> it says, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. So I've got to give my life ahead to the cross. Whatever I had before, I've got to die to it. For me to live for Christ, I've got to sacrifice my life. Very good. That's better. Jesus was the model for us to follow. He gave us examples in his own life, how he laid his life down for other people. And that is what he, he set for us to show us how, what is love. Okay. Uh, that's one more. Um, I think it's um, to um, give up, you know, ungodly um, ways to start. I mean, yeah, we say Jesus, um, you know, gave his life, but he had a life. He, he socialized and, 
everything else. So, you know, there's a perspective, but it's to give up ungodly um, ways and habits and attitudes. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go to this side there. He leaves the church, so, you know, what can I say? Your question was, is it selfish of God to be asking us? And we've all given the right, correct Christian answers. But if we're honest, and if people outside are honest, the answer probably is, yes, it's selfish, it's my life. Why should I have to do as some God tells me I should do that you've made up and you believe? So our mindset might say, we might give the right answers. I'm not knocking everybody answers, they're all correct. I, I'm talking we as in a global we. Um, but actually the way that we live our lives probably don't reflect the answers we would give in an exam. Okay, did you wanna say something? Yeah, I was just gonna say similar, but it's not, it's not selfish that God tells us to give our life. But because we know, we know what it is that we enjoy now, that Christ died for us. Still, we can, my head is telling me, it's, let's look at it in an agricultural way. If we don't die to things, if we don't, we, we, we see blooms every spring and summer, but sometimes some of those blooms comes from just dead seed, dry seeds, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry, I don't want to. Yeah, how does have it given the whole sermon? No, no. <laughs> no, it's just that it's not selfish of God to ask us to, to die for self. But because we're Christians, we know that he has given us the life in abundance. But we, we need to still die to something for us to live. Because without that, we will, we will not live anyway. We will be dead. Even though we don't want to admit it, we'll still be dead. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Right, the, the conclusion of his sermon... Just kidding. Well, let's go back a bit. Psalm 139 is a very, very, very powerful psalm which talks about how God knows each one of us intimately and he knows us from the beginning of our time to the end of our time. He knows everything about each one of you in this room. He knows what you're going to eat tomorrow. He knows what you're gonna, how many hairs you've got in your head. Or how many you haven't got in your head? <laughs> he knows you intimately. So for us to die to ourselves and to follow God, who knows the best for us in everything we do, we're only doing what's best for us in the first place, correct? And the thing about it is, last Easter we had a, a family gathering. And um, I don't know how it happened. I guess it was Easter. We had a conversation about Jesus to uh, some of our relatives. And it came to the subject of, of heaven, of entering heaven. And uh, there was an argument which broke out. Who is God to deny me entrance to heaven? Who does he think he is to stop me from going through those gates? That's one reason why I won't follow him in the first place. <laughs> and the thing about it is, we as individuals, we as people, think we know better than God. Yeah? But the thing about it is, God knows us intimately. He knows who we are, and he knows what our path is for the future. So when we're talking about, where should I live? Where should I work? Where should I be in life? What's going on with my life? God has it under control if we allow him to in the first place. Yeah? So very often, as it, uh, the two uh, preachers here were telling me earlier on, okay, basically, God has it under control. If he has it under control, who are we to try and take control and what happens when we take control? It all gets messed up. And then we try and work it out. And then we think, I'll tell you what. Let's ask God to help me out of this again. And it's full circle. 
So we are to be people who uh, allow God to be the center of everything we do. And as we do that, we're connected with God, and God does things through us. Yesterday, we had a celebration for David's ministry here in Greenford. And one of the things which uh, David echoed throughout his ministry was wanting the best for people around him. He wanted them to succeed more than what he could succeed. He wanted them to be a pastor. He wanted them to be a worship leader. He wanted them to be an individual who makes a difference in their life. And God created that within him to do that so, so wonderfully. And uh, my experience with David was that he wanted the best for me. And that's David. He's not God. God is even more so than that. He wants the best for all of you. So in dying to ourselves, it means we have a life which flourishes, which is hard because it's against the flow of society. But it also means we're in relationship with the living God who created this world. Now, dying to yourself is also symbolized and illustrated in another thing. Baptism. Baptism is not a symbolic. Something spiritual happens when someone gets baptized. It is symbolizing us dying to ourselves when we go under the water. But also as you rise up, we're a new creation. And the thing about it is, where were you in this journey at this moment in time? Have you allowed God in, in the first place? If so, have you been baptized as well? Because bapti baptism is part of our relationship with God. In Acts 2, it says this, repent believe and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. What does it say? For, and then you receive the gift of. So that is the mathematical equation of salvation. All those elements need to happen for you to be whole in Jesus. I'm going to disappear for one minute. Back in two seconds. This is not the toilet. Right. Right, okay. Got a few illustrations. Now... Right. Unfortunately, there will be no talk of football today. I just want to apologise for some of the things people are wearing today. Akin and um, Chris at the back there, but there will be no talk of football, even though Chelsea won 5-2 yesterday. <laughs> but there will be plenty of talk on gardening. Who's into gardening here? That's right. Well, the best of you can go then. So uh, <laughs> well, let's go back to that passage, shall we? Akin, Akin, could you come here for a minute, please? Today, right. Open your hand out. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not, it's not, it's not a trick. Put it in your hand, please, please. No, let's open your hand. Oh, it's not. Is <laughs> Sabrina, come over, come over, here, Sabrina. It's out of your seat. Come, go, okay, okay. All right, hold that in your hand. The Bible, so you can go now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that that was awful. If you're going to help me, help me. Stand next to me, please. Okay. Right. 
The Bible says, don't sneeze, whatever you do. The Bible says, if a grain of wheat is buried and it dies to itself, it's fruitful as it grows. What, describe what's in front of you. I think it's a seed. It's a seed, isn't it? How small is it? Uh, less than one centimetre long. No, it's actually uh, one centimetre long. No. I, I measured it earlier. Less. No, it's more. All right. This is a very tiny seed. You can pass it around if you want to, you don't have to, but it's a very, very tiny seed. It's very insignificant because it's just a small seed. But the miraculous thing about that seed is, is this. It's like Blue Peter here. It's what I've done earlier. Right, okay. If you put that seed in this earth here and bury it alive, you can hold that for me. Something miraculous happens. Has anything happened yet? No. The thing about it is, is this, okay? You plant that in a bit of earth, okay? Something happens. Now, there's something miraculous about planting a seed. Because if you, as, you look, as you look in there, nothing's happening at all. But as you water this and... Uh, Excuse me, what's, what's the laughter about at the back there for? Right. As you water this, and as you um, care for this, something happens in this invisible world you can't see. Okay? And like us as followers of Jesus, when we come to faith and obedience to God, something happens to us, and we can't see what's going on because it's within us. Something is going on invisibly. And it's the same with this as well. I'm going to go back and do something else in a minute. Because it's one I've done earlier. But the thing about it is, we are to be patient with the life God gives us. Because we are such a Mac McDonald society people, where we want our food on our table now, straight away, we prayed for it. It's got to happen now. When you're praying, it's happening straight away. <coughs> but in God's straight away, which could be a long time. When you're talking to God, when you're basking in his presence, he's doing stuff in that invisible world you can't see. Just as it is with this plant here. There's nothing in there anyway. I just used a bit of earth in there, so... Uh, it's, it's not the season to plant anything. Hey. It's like, it's like, um, it's like Blue Peter here today, isn't it? Okay. Right. Yeah. Right, okay. I planted those about six weeks ago. But the thing about it is, it needs water. It needs sunshine. It needs more water. It's going to come to light in a minute. It needs more sunshine. It, means it, needs, it needs, it needs, it needs, it needs. Caring and looking after. And if you looked at the passage in John 15, it goes through how God looks after us as a, as a vine. And the thing about it is, is if you read Psalm chapter 1, it asks this question. How can a young man or young woman keep his way pure? By meditating on his word. Yeah? He's like a tree planted by a stream, which roots are soaking in the water regularly. His leaves will prosper and bear fruit. And we are to be soaked in God's water. We need to be soaked in God's light. And as we do that, we will grow, we'll be effective, 
and will make a difference in the world we're in. Now, when you look at this, this little seed, it looks so insignificant. The wind can blow it away. And you know, this is the grace of God. Because each one of us in this room, well, that's a human being God created. Out of dust, in fact. And our rightful way of life is to be blown away. But he's chosen to say, these people, I'm going to love, I'm going to cherish, I'm going to pour my love on them in such a way, I'm going to connect to them in a powerful way, that they can do the things I could do, and have a life which is not just for this time here, but for eternity as well. That's how he sees you. You're not just a bit of dirt. Your identity in Christ is a powerful person in God. People talk to me often about my height. But why is I, I don't like standing next to Keith for some reason. Okay. But when people talk to you about my height, I, I said to him, you're looking in the wrong place. You're looking in the wrong place. Because spiritually, I'm a giant. Amen. Yeah? And very often, people look at the physical and not who we are spiritually. And the thing about it is, is stop looking what's physically in front of you and look what's beyond that and what God is doing within you. Yeah? Amen. Who knows what a perennial is? Yeah. What, what, what every year? What comes back every year? What? The, now, let me give you a gardening tip, okay? Give a little gardening tip here for you. If you go to a garden centre, go to the clearance areas where the perennials are, okay, and go for the ones which look half dead. Pick them up, okay, they're usually a quid rather than 10 pound, and they'll come back the following year. Now, the reason why I'm asking you that question is a perennial is a plant which comes back every year, but during the, uh, the frost season, it dies down to nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's nothing there. You're thinking, what's that? Nothing. That's a pot of dirt. Okay? But what is happening? Something powerful and miraculous is happening underneath that earth during that dormant time. It's getting energy in its root. Something is growing down below. Then comes the sun. The sun comes out. It's spring, and then these little roots start coming through, and this plant comes up, and it grows, and it flowers, and it comes up again. And that's an illustration of us in Christ, you know. Each of us, okay, though you may feel dormant, God is doing something in you. Be, we've got to be patient people. Very often we think, what's going on? And very often, God is doing so much, but you can't see it. So every time you go to a garden centre and you see perennial, you know what it's about. It's the illustration of God doing something in you in those dark times. Yeah? I don't get annuals because they die every year. But uh, that's another thing. Okay, let's carry on, shall we? So key is, is water. We, as people of God, need to be fed by God. We need to spend time in his word. We need to spend time with him and be watered by him to be strengthened. Now, I love going on holiday. But it has its costs. You go on holiday for two weeks and you come home to a garden half dead because the heather, holly, 
Look after the garden while I'm away, as there are the two kids, two daughters. We went out once, the day you went away. That's no good, is it? So you come back to dead, 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 half dead, and you've got to start again. But ha, huh, last year i done something different. I got a self-watering irrigation system for the garden. <laughs> really good. It comes on in, in the morning and at night time and it does the whole garden. I just have to sit down and just watch. <laughs> okay, like this. It's great. It's great. Went away for a holiday. The garden looks great. Except when I went to Jamaica last year, because I had it on the wrong setting. I had it put, come on every seven days, not every day. <laughs> but if we're watered and watered and watered by God, we're going to flourish. Yeah? If you go to my garden, or our garden, I must say our garden, Wendy, if she was here, she would say it's our garden. Yeah, I plant all the plants in it. But... Uh, <laughs> It's flourishing, it's, it's lush, it looks really good. I'm not being big-headed, but it does. Because it's been watered, and it's been fed as well. But also, it's in the sunlight as well. I can go away again. Look at this eye. All right, who can name this plant? <laughs> who knows what this is? That's a cosmos. Very, very good, very good, very good. So I'll, t I'll sweep up the mess on the carpet afterwards, well, don't worry about that. Okay. So the, th the thing about it is, is this okay? I'm going to have some artistic licenses here, but we are to bear fruit, okay? And what is key for a, a, a plant of any sort is light. And uh, what's interesting in the morning, if you wake up in the morning and look at your garden, first in the morning the flower buds are just slightly open. Come about 11 o'clock, whoosh, they're like open, open, and they're basking in that light. And uh, again, it, it's illustration of how we need God's light in our life. We need God's light in our life. You know, you know what happens? You know, the whole point of dying to ourselves is that we produce fruit. And there's two parts of fruit I want to talk about. Now, that flower, the half dead here, apart from one, because it's, it's out of season. There you go, there's one there. Right, you can look at, enjoy that. That flower displays something of God's glory of creation. But also, as we get close to God, his characteristics grow in us as well. Galatians talks about the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I didn't, I didn't memorize it. It's written down. So, uh, but the thing about it is, is we are to grow in those areas, in our character. And... You know what happens as well? We make a difference when we go in a room. This is a rose from my garden. Smell that. Have a smell that. Very good. Yeah. You want to have a smell? Yeah. Uh, smell? Yeah, good. No. Of course you can. <laughs> no, no, no. And you see, this is a rose. It's not a cosmos. Oh, it's that's, that's, that's for my... Right, I, I, it, water and sunlight does that. Go and pass that around. Take that top off. Oh, it's not top. <laughs> now, the thing about it is, is that that's a rose. And the reason why I bought that is that God's fragrance from us will actually fill a room because of who we are in Christ. We are to make a difference to who we are. 
and that is by dying to ourselves and following Christ and basking in his, in his love, yeah? And you get two reactions, or maybe more than two reactions, but one of the reactions will be you're going to irritate people because they don't like what they see when they see you because it's against what they want to do in life. But with other people, it'll be, I want some of that. They have something I really want. And it's your story in Jesus. And, you know, the thing about it is, is this. Our prime uh, reason for living is to know God. And in knowing God is to share who we are with God with people around us. And what's interesting, with uh, any plant, if I cut these back after they, uh, after they uh, flower, you cut them back and they come back again, and again, and again. But there's a thing called timing. Because if you wait near the end of the season and you, cut them, and you don't cut them back, this is what happens. That'll do. Uh, can you be my little little uh, helper, Sabina? All right. She held your hand out. So you got there. Loads of seeds, isn't there? Bit of seeds. See seeds. 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 See that? Mm. Go, go walk around and shout at the people. Make yourself useful. All right. So basically, so basically, from that uh, one flower head, there's probably about seven seeds, yeah? If I plant those seeds, you'll get this, yeah? And you'll get more, that little insignificant plant, uh, seed becomes that. The thing about it is, is you as individuals are going to reflect God's glory and plant seeds of God's love and authority and, what, and salvation into people's lives around you. And be patient in watering those seeds with love and kindness and the fruits of the Spirit. We went to a... We converted Warren uh, last year into a Brentford fan. Um, sorry? Who said that? I'm not, it's Brentford. How can it be talking about football? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry about I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry about that. I tried to get him to the Chelsea uh, side, but, you know, I, I'm working on him. So me, me and um, the, the orange boy over there, the drama boy, Andy, went to this match. And um, there was a guy standing there. I goes, that's Paul Harris. Paul Harris. I used to work with Paul Harris at uh, Hamilton Rentals. It was a computer firm. And there used to be Paul Harris, there used to be a guy called Trevor, another guy called Paul uh, Farquhar, and another guy called um, Mark Simpson. I used to chat all the time to him about Jesus, okay? And you're thinking, they're not really listening, are they? They're not really listening, are they? Nothing's going on. Nothing's going on. Paul back, got baptised last year, okay? Trevor got baptised the year before that. And Mark is thinking about baptism. He's going to church. But the thing about it is we bumped into him at this uh, stadium. Out of all the places we could find, he was there as a, as, a, as a security steward. But his life has changed because someone spoke to him many years ago. And, you know, you're thinking, I keep on speaking to him about Jesus, but nothing seems to happen. Remember in the secret places what God is doing in people's lives. Keep on, keep on pouring out uh, those uh, words, those uh, acts of love to people around you. So there's two things I want you to think of. One is the people around you. Work colleagues, neighbours, family, friends. 
lift them up in prayer. And God will do one of two things. He will use you and use other people around them. You could be one of a hundred people talking to someone about Jesus. Uh, and it's not up to you to get them to Jesus or for them to come to faith. It's God. It's up to you to be that person sowing the seed. And as the power of the sower says, you throw seeds out and some will go on good ground, some will go on, on, on the best soil, some will go on okay soil, but some you know, will grow and grow and come to faith at some point. So, one, get close to God, know God. Allow his characteristics to grow in you. And two, throw those seeds out of love, of kindness, of patience, and make a difference in the community around you. But guess what? We have an opportunity, which we've been talking about for the last three or four months, the turning. Today is our last day. Well, it's not our last day. You've got next week as well to sign up for it. So please see me afterwards so we can uh, get your name on there for you to make a difference on those streets. Because remember, those, remember at those streets, we're going to be basking in God the night before. And the fragrance of God is going to be coming off us. And uh, we're going to see a difference because of that. Amen. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.